This is your captain speaking. Today's exercise. Okay, that is what movies are all about right there. Maverick Top Gun, Maverick, that's making a comeback. That was last summer's Top Gun sequel, credited with bringing audiences back to the movie theater with so many choices for streaming, too. There's a place for films that might not have been huge blockbusters as well, but are still finding critical acclaim. So there's a lot out there. Film critic Brian Eggert of Deep Focus Review is here with his top five must-see new releases, both in theaters and in streaming. Good to meet you, man. Thanks yeah, for you coming. Too. Thanks yeah, for having appreciate me. It. All right, so we're going to hit our, uh, our first movie here. This is Steven Spielberg's new movie. It's based on his youth, kind of his story, his family, and how he became a legendary director. The movie's called The Fablemans. Check it out. Sammy, we're going to use Daddy's camera to film it. Only crash the train once, okay? Then after we get the film developed, you can watch it crash over and over till it's not so scary anymore. And your real train won't ever get broken. One more thing, Dolly. Let's not tell your father. It'll be our secret movie, just yours and mine. Okay? Okay. All right, Brian, what do you think? So I've talked a lot of, to a lot of people about this movie, and they're, they seem to be afraid to watch it, I think. You know, Why? It was a box office bomb, and I think you, they feel like you need to know a lot about Spielberg to watch it. And I think he's dealing with a lot of universal themes that kind of make this not a prerequisite to know a lot about Spielberg. Mm -hmm. He's dealing with you know, a coming-of-age story. He's dealing with dysfunctional families. Anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism, absolutely. And uh, then he's learning to understand the world by making films about it. Mm -hmm. And you've got this great cast that's all giving you know, many Oscar-nominated right. performances in the cast. And uh, I think people, if they, if they head out to the theaters, even though it's on streaming, head out to the theaters while it's there and see it, they're going to see what is you know, just another Steven Spielberg crowd. He just theory. always aims for the heart. He never misses. Absolutely. That's his specialty. This is his most personal film. It, right. was, it was one of my favorites of last year. Well, I wonder if it does better at home, perhaps, on a streaming than it does in the theaters. We'll see, sure. though. Yeah. All right, so next, a documentary on Disney+. Plus. It's about a couple obsessed with studying volcanoes. I haven't heard this one. This one's called Fire of Love. Here's a clip. This is Katya. And this is Maurice. <laughs> Tomorrow will be their last day. They will leave behind hundreds of hours of footage, thousands of photos, and a million questions. Oh, okay, that's an intro. Yeah. Wow. So this this Katya and Maurice Craft, they spent about 20 years studying volcanoes, traveling the world. And, you know, it's a Nat Geo documentary, mm. so you've kind of seen one, you've seen them all in a way. They're very similar in format. But this one, as you can kind of tell from that clip, is is a little bit different. Uh, the director, Sarah Dosa, and the, the narrator, uh, Miranda July, who's also a filmmaker, kind of give this a weird perspective. Uh, of they tell you up front what's happening and then they go backwards. Right, right. And and they're, just their, their lens through understanding this movie is a little bit offbeat, much like this couple. So you've got these really sublime images of, of volcanoes and yet this very tender romance at the center. Interesting. Uh, and so I think Look it's... At that. Wow. It's crazy, yeah. It's wow. crazy. Wow. Okay. Must see in your opinion? Uh, absolutely. It's one of the most interesting documentaries I've seen in years. Uh, oh, good, good deal. Next movie, biopic about Emmett Till. Everyone's heard about this one and the events surrounding his murder in Mississippi during the Civil Rights era. Right. Oh, he just doesn't understand how different things are in Mississippi. Are you listening? Yes. Be small down there. Like this? This one's got critical acclaim all over it. Absolutely. It, it bombed in the theaters back right. in October, but it's back in theaters this weekend for Black History Month. And yeah, it's about a very disturbing uh, chapter of American history. But uh, I think if people take, you know, take the time to see this, they're going to see, one, that it's a great performance from Danielle Deadweiler, who stars as Emmett Till's mother. Mm -hmm. And the whole film is kind of through her perspective. Um, she was a major Oscar snub this year. I think she gave one of the best performances of last year, yeah. and the Academy just didn't recognize her. Do you think the bar of going to the theater is changing? Like, what drives people to the theater these days? Does it have to be action? Does it have to be something different? Oh, I think so, yeah. yeah. I think it has to be kind of an event movie. Um, but Avatar, Top Gun. Right. Right. I, I can't imagine anyone going to a movie like The Fablemans or Till and being and walking out disappointed that they went. Right. You know what my favorite thing in the world is? <laughs> going to a movie theater by myself at 10 p.m. at night it's on great. a Tuesday. It's great. It's that my or like, healthy habit. Or like at 11 a.m. in the morning. 
yeah, yeah. when no one's there. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. slow hour. Right. Where I have it by myself. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Streaming on Peacock. Uh, Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. Isn't it divine? I swore I would never set foot in the Avenue Montaigne, but what with the wedding and when in Paris and the moment I laid eyes on Ravissant, I was ravished to the tune of 500 pounds. 500 quid for a dress? Shh, shh, Lord Dant. I don't mind admitting things have been a bit bloody of late, but when I put it on, nothing else matters. I've heard nothing about this movie. Absolutely. It was, it was kind of a bomb last year. It sort of came and went. But it's one of the happiest movies that I saw last year. Leslie Manville stars, uh, who you might know from uh, Phantom Thread, okay. if you saw that. Um, she stars as this maid who has always dreamed of owning a Christian Duarte dress. And through kind of a fairy tale set of circumstances, yet also like grounded in realism, uh, she gets the chance to buy one. And it's, you know, the kind of movie where you just sit there, you smile throughout. By the end, I had, like, tears of, you know, happiness streaming down my face. Well, that's, it, re that's reassuring. It's, that's good. It's such a happy movie. Okay. And I, I think anyone who takes a risk on it will uh, will not regret it. Okay, great. Uh, let's do the last one here. M. Night Shyamalan. Everyone knows what's coming here. This is called uh, Knock at the Cabin. Check it out. We're not choosing anyone. We're not sacrificing anyone. Not now. Not ever even if it means the death of everyone else in the world. Yes. Even if I believe the world was at stake, which I don't, that's what it means. I would watch the world die a hundred times over before having the Christ. Waste of time. They're never going to choose to do this. And I don't blame them. So M. Night Shyamalan, you know, he's, he's pretty hit or miss with me. Uh, more misses than hits, but this is an M. Night Shyamalan hit. Like it or not, it's always a big twist. Absolutely. And it, just, it kind of plays a spin on horror and, and suspense. So, yeah, this family is on vacation. These four strangers come, and they tell them that the apocalypse is coming mm -hmm. and that uh, the family has to make a sacrifice among their own to stop the apocalypse. So what would you do in this situation? And those are the kind of questions that you're gonna be asking yourself on the drive home. Uh, it's a really fascinating concept, uh, superbly acted by Dave Bautista from Guardians of the Galaxy. He is such a surprise, like he's good in everything he, he is. does. He is, yeah. Glass Onion, he was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Ben Aldridge also from um, uh, last year's Spoiler Alert is outstanding. So you like that movie? Yeah. Have you seen it yet, the Shyamalan one? You yeah. liked it? Yeah, Okay, I did. good, yes, all right, recommends it, good. Hey, you can read more of Brian's reviews on his website, Deep Focus Review, right? Deep yep, Focus Review. Absolutely. We got a link to that at care11.com. Hey, appreciate it, man. Good to meet you. Thanks. Cheers. Too. Yeah.